Is it hard to access affordable, healthy food? Then listen carefully. Daryl Addison, an African-American inventor, has patented a process for growing food on demand. He called it Torpedo Pot. Torpedo Pot is a fully automated flower pot that gives you control over your plant's environment. All you do is add soil, seeds, and plants to the flower pot and watch it grow. Yes, Torpedo Pot grows the rest. Visit www.torpedopot.com. Salibonani unjani makadini enyu. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the African Diaspora News Channel. My name is Marita Wana, aka DJ Woke Hunters. I am woke, but never broke, honey. And yes, I will be your new host for this episode. And of course, I am very proud to announce that I am a new contributor of the African Diaspora News Channel. Yay! Woohoo! I'm to celebrate, very much excited and I'm very much glad to be here. And of course, you know, I'm a Zimbabwean based here in Zimbabwe and without wasting much of your time, I'm going to get into the nitty gritty of this video. Now, of course, um, you have seen that we are speaking about a historical war heroine um, of our country, Zimbabwe, and she goes by the name Buya Neanda, but her actual full name is um, Neanda Charwe Nyakasikana. I will say that again for those who do not get it. Neanda Charwe Nyakasikana. And um, of course, she was influential in our, um, our first liberation war, which is what we actually call here the first Chimurenga. Um, uh, she lived from the years 1840 to 1890. Yes, no, 1840 to 1898. Yes, 1840 to 1898. Um, she was actually, you know, uh, executed in that year, 1898. But because she had become so influential, we have actually, you know, been uh, motivated and encouraged by what she did for our liberation, for our freedom against the British. Um, we actually built a statue in commemoration of um, Buya Nihanda. Um, and that statue has actually cost a lot of money, but um, I suppose it was actually worth it. It's actually um, shown and has been portrayed, is being portrayed in our capital, the city of Harare, as a tourist attraction. Um, of course, their motive for this was to actually, you know, uh, you know, inspire or aspire young girls to fight for injustice in our own country. And uh, of course, um, Buya Nehanda, um, it all started off when, you know, uh, she, you know, as a spirit medium, um, she was actually, you know, part of the people who was disturbed, disturbed rather, by the, you know, the land invasion of the British. Um, of course, the tax that was imposed upon the locals, um, they're trying to enforce regulations on their land and their cattle. You know, a lot of, you know, you know, mistreatment, if I should say, of the locals of my country at that time and um due to that you know the debele people at that time because they decided to rebel against the british they were joined by the shona people now in the shona tribe there are six clans which is the zizuru clan the manika clan the karanga clan the ndao clan the roji clan and the kore kore clan I happen to be from the Ndao clan and Mpuya Neander apparently is from, was from the Zizuru clan. Now she actually, according to historical sources, she wasn't actually the original Neander. 
Um, the original Nehanda lived years back, um, and she was a daughter of Mutota, um, the first Monomotapa, who was living in the escarpment north of Sipolilo in about 1430. Now, Mutota was actually the founder of the Monomotapa, of the Mutapa, actually the Mutapa state. Um, and Mutota also had a son who apparently had a half-sister who was actually called um, Nyam, let me say this correctly, Nyamika, Nyamika. But she was then later on called Neanda, and he actually, you know, was now forced to have, um, you know, uh, sexual relations with his half-sister in order to increase the power of Matope and um, the Motope state and... Uh, you know, to create a lot of influence around it. And because of that, because of this incest ritual, it is believed that um, Matope and his empire improved and increased due to this. Um, Matope then handed over his uh, portion of um, his empire to Neander. And Neander, who became so powerful and well-known, you know, her spirit then became to live on in other human bodies as years went on and on and on and on um, over the years until about 500 years ago when the Mbuya Neander that we celebrate as a war heroine today um, was actually, um, you know, passed on to her. And which explains why she had become so influential. It's just because she actually was a descendant of this uh, Neander um, uh, daughter, you know, this Neander daughter of, uh, you know, the first, um, you know, Monomotapa state. Um, it explains why she became, she was so powerful and why the white settlers were so afraid of her that they actually had to execute her. And it's unfortunate, but her spirit actually continues to live on. And, you know, both her and Sekuru Kagui, who was also influential in the first uh, liberation war, or what we call the first Chimurenga, who was also very much influential. Her and him were both charged with murder of a native commissioner at the time. And they were tried and found guilty on the 2nd of March, 1898, and were sentenced to death um, on the 27th of April, which is actually my birthday, unfortunately, they were both hanged. Um, at the time, in actual fact, Mbuya Neander was very resistant. She actually didn't want to convert to Christianity, and before she died, she was forced to convert to Christianity, but she said, no, I will not do that. And did he? That's what she said. She said, I will not convert myself to a religious belief or religion that has been imposed by the white man. And because that she had so much influence and she had so much resistance, which makes us so proud to have such a national heroine in our country, um, you know, compared to Sekuru Kagui, who was like her colleague and also um, a spirit medium, um, he was actually, you know, ended up at, you know, giving in to, you know, converting um, to Christianity. It was a completely, um, you know, sad day, you know, horrendous day. And unfortunately, you know, even though she was gone, unfortunately, you know, they went with the remains of Mbuya Nehanda um, to the UK. Um, as like a trophy to say this is what we have, you know, been able to accomplish in order to colonize this small, you know, uh, this, this small region um, to the Queen of England at the time, um, Queen Victoria. So because of due to these remains are said to be at a British museum in the UK, our president, President Emerson Munangagwa, has actually gone to the UK. Recently, he went to the UK to go and collect these remains of Mbuya Nehanda and other um, war heroes who were involved in the First Liberation War, or what we call the First Chimurenga. And, um, you know, it is said that... Um, 
while the government, the British government, has said that they claim that there actually are no remains of Mbuyanianda, and some Zimbabweans actually say that the remains of Mbuyanianda could probably actually still be here in our country, Zimbabwe, uh, since the British government is denying that they have any of these remains of um, Buyanianda because after all I mean a girl a European girl whoever some white girl will be taking a selfie you know with the skull showing in the background at a museum and of course which is very much disrespectful and you know showing or portraying these in a museum is obviously very much disrespectful and you know it's 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 just not like us as humans to do such but according you know to many um you know um historical facts you know these uh, remains are actually at a british museum we are hoping of course that our president will be actually be able to get the real and authentic remains of mbuyaneanda as it is said that by some zimbabweans they could actually be given a fake skull um, you know, I hope that is not the case because it would be really sad that we have built, you know, a statue of Mbuyanianda but we can't actually get the remains of Mbuyanianda that are said to have been taken, were taken as trophies to the UK. But I would actually like to find out from you, the viewers, you know, do you actually think that Mbuyanianda's skull um, is actually here in our country, her remains are here in our country, or rather that the, you know, the British government is lying that they do not have the remains of Mbuyaneanda, or that, you know, um, they're going to actually give us a fake replica of the skull. What do you guys think about that? I'm very much curious to know what you as the viewers uh, think of this but other than that you know i'm actually you know done for you know today's episode um and i hope you really much enjoyed this episode of african diaspora news channel um i can't wait to see you again in the next episode and of course make sure you hit that like button subscribe and of course hit that notification bell for more updates about what's going on currently around our world from me and the team it's been a pleasure cheers Bye. Colonization never ended in the white supremacist system. And as we see today, the colonization is in the mind. Now, those who have been enslaved and those who have been colonized, we're still dealing with the remnants of that through the colonization of the mind. Pick up my book, Seven Steps to Decolonize the Mind, and we will help deprogram you from the colonization that was put upon you by generations and generations of white supremacy. You can pick it up today on Amazon.com.